Experiment 6, Calorimetry, calculate the heat of dissolving of sodium carbonate. Well, I've got the dissolving reaction for sodium carbonate up top, and I've got the equations for the uh, calorimetry experiment saying that the heat given off by dissolving, that's the reaction that's occurring right here, is equal to the negative of the heat taken in by the solution, the negative sign is there because one thing is giving off heat and the other is taking in heat. And so there's a sign difference there that is accounted for by the minus sign. The heat is called a lowercase q. So q of dissolving equals minus q solution. And then I filled in the terms for delta H dissolving. That's our unknown, our times moles of uh, sodium carbonate, and then uh, the other side, mass of solution, specific heat capacity of the solution, and the temperature difference conveyed as T final minus T initial. All right, now I'll look at my data for the experiment. So I know that my mass of sodium carbonate is going to be the difference between these two numbers. So 17.19 minus 6.16, I get 11.03. Uh, that's going to be my mass of sodium carbonate. And I need moles, but I have mass right now. And uh, let's see, back to my data. I can see that my mass of water is going to be beaker plus water minus beaker. So let me do that. My mass of water is 103.45 grams. Therefore, my mass of solution is going to be the sum of these two. One one four one hundred fourteen point four eight grams. Okay, so we now have our mass of solution. Um, let's see, specific heat capacity of our solution. That we're going to assume is the same as the specific heat capacity of water. That's going to be 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So we have those two. Looking back at our data, we can see that our initial temp is 25.5. Our final temp, which is all five of these, and our plateau region with a maximum plateau for this one is 30.1 degrees. So T final is 30.1, T initial 25.5. Okay, good. We've got all the variables on this side. We're solving for delta H dissolving. The only thing we don't have is our moles of sodium carbonate. We have our mass of sodium carbonate. Let's see, uh, I didn't bring my molar mass with me, so 22.99 times 2 plus... 12.01 plus 3 times 16.00, 105.0. Oh, yeah, we used from previous experiments 105.988. So let's do that. Eleven point oh three divided by one oh five point nine eight eight one zero four zero six eight two four six figs moles of sodium carbonate 
Man, a little pen there. All right, so now I think we've got everything. And we'll do this. So we're going to fill in everything in this equation right here except for delta H dissolving. I have my moles. Minus mass of solution. Specific heat capacity. And uh, I'm running out of space here, so let's just do this math right here. 30.1 minus 25.5, I get 4.6. That is a positive number. All of these numbers are positive. With the minus sign, my delta H dissolving will end up being negative. That's good. This is an exothermic reaction. That's why the solution warmed up. Now, as far as solving this, I'm going to divide both sides. By 0 0.104068. And our delta H dissolving, 114.48 times 4.184 times 4.6. 4.6 is going to limit my sig figs here to two sig figs. Divided by 0 0.104068. And I get... 21,172. A unit analysis shows that my grams cancel out, my degrees Celsius cancel out, so I'm left with joules, and in fact, joules per mole as my set of units. Going back down to two sig figs. Oh, oh, <laughs> almost forgot my minus sign there. Minus. Minus 21, moving the decimal point three places to get kilojoules instead of joules, minus 21 kilojoules per mole.